What up everybody, it's YBF Ferro, and we're back in this thing for another reaction video. We're still on that YBF Picked It tip, so I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite viral conspiracy theories. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, run me up in the algorithm so we can get this stuff out to as many people as possible. Be trying to grow this channel fast, quick, easy, and in a hurry, okay? Now I'm gonna put in the work for you guys, which I gotta work with me too, all right? All right, let's get into it. First thing a lot of people say is, where's the edge? Well, look at this map where Antarctica is a 360 degree ice barrier that holds the water in. These ice walls are real and they stand 150 feet above the surface of the water. Then you need to understand that there is no independent access to Antarctica. Average people can only go there on a guided tour. It has no towns, no cities, and no permanent residences. What's past the 150 foot ice wall is anyone's guess how far the ice extends, how it terminates, and what exists beyond it. Is he chipping away at sky ice? Was the exact same color as the sky. We had to wear a thick, heavy going outside gloves to handle it. The stuff was so cold, it would instantly freeze your skin if you touched it. I don't remember what the temperature he said it was, but it was something like hundreds of degrees below zero, way colder than the normal ice that was outside. He had to carry it in a metal bottle that was kind of like a thermos. He let me play with the piece of it for a while. It felt lighter than a piece of normal ice of the same size, like it wasn't very heavy at all. It almost felt like you could throw it up in the air and it would just float back down. But I didn't try that. And it was also a little flexible when I tried to bend it. It didn't break like normal ice would. And even for a small piece, you could see through it. It was solid blue right from the surface. And here's the really weird part. It didn't melt into water. When it got warm, because we had it inside, it just started to shrink. It got smaller and smaller but my glove never got wet. And there was no water on the floor. The stuff just turned into thin air when it got warm and vaporized. He said that was the reason why they had to study the stuff right there in Antarctica. You couldn't take the sky ice back to America to study it because it was almost impossible to keep it cold enough during transit. And then they shared a verse right here where it says, and above the firmament that was over their heads, was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And then we continue off where it says it would always vaporize into air and you'd have nothing left when you got back to the U.S. He said Russian scientists had discovered the same problem when they tried to take the ice back to Russia. So that was why they, had, they all had research stations in Antarctica. After maybe 15 minutes of handling the piece of sky ice, it was almost completely gone. Just like just a tiny little bit was left and my glove was dry the whole time. I'd never seen anything like it before or since. And that's unusual because I've always had an interest in scientific things. I think that's even why I got selected to go to Antarctica because a big part of the interview was about science and what I believed about things. So I really thought it was cool to see something I'd never heard of before. The whole time I was at McMurdo, I heard of, I heard people talking about the wall like that was a special place. It's pretty common to find ice walls and ice cliffs all over Antarctica. The whole place is ice, but it's all just normal white or clear ice. So I asked my friend where they get the sky ice from, and he said it comes from the wall. What do you guys think about the whole flat earth ice wall thing. Um, me personally, it's very, very, very interesting for the simple fact that you have so many ancient religions, um, ancient texts and things of that nature that give credence to the whole flat earth um, conspiracy. Also, the NASA footage that we see is obviously CGI and it just makes you wonder if we know for a fact that the earth is round then how is it that we do not have 
a solid picture of the planet from space. That's not CGI. That's not a composite image that is just straight up, no BS, Earth from space. It's kind of weird to me. With all this technology that we supposedly have, there's no pictures, no nothing. And then you got all this doctored space footage from NASA. It just really, really makes me think twice before I believe anything that the government tries to throw at us involved in space. Especially with all this alien stuff. Because let's say that we do live on a flat plane that's ever expanding. Who's to say that we don't have extra terrestrials right here on this plane? Because terrestrial just means land. Extra just means not from here. Extraterrestrial means you're not from this land. And we've all seen the Terra Infinita map. If we haven't, we're about to take a look at it. So stay tuned. Let's get right into this next one. Wow. Worlds beyond the pole. When we talk Antarctica, when we talk Australia's, you know, I mean, I, I sense some, I sense some flat drop coming in hot, man. It might be time to get oriented the right way. Because you have Antarctica and you have outside Antarctica, my naga. You have more lands. <laughs> have you heard of this one? Oh. Oh, oh. We're talking more planets. Let's take a tour. Where are these other gods hiding out? Right? They're hiding out beyond the barrier. More barrier. You know, this is a much thinner barrier here. It looks like. Patalia or Pitachia? Pitachia? Managa, where mm. do these elites go? <laughs> they go right outside the barrier, Jack. Where do these rockets Ever. go when they take off? They never go always straight up. Out. They always go straight out. And where's Thoth the Moving Island? Remember Thoth the Moving Island, man? We got to get that old Hyborian map again. Oh, shit. Thoth. Surprise. <laughs> ah, Mercury. Mm -hmm. The closest planet to the sun, huh? <laughs> Our planet's Lance. just more worlds beyond the poles, man. Giving you these fake, uh, you know, globular, isolated, lens-produced images. New Appalachia. Remember Presser John of Appalachia, right? <laughs> Come on, man. Look at this, man. Oh, boy. We're just talking more worlds beyond the poles, man. And we again, we found thought the moving on. So, what's outside of this South America, man? Love to the bro, Sekau. Sekau, hope I'm saying that right. S E K O U, man. The bro's always, you know, dropping incredible drop. And look at, looky, looky here, man. Look at the gem that the bro just dropped. All right, see. So, with this Nuss confounding map, uh, Nuss confounding, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but. Yeah, but this map is really interesting because people just keep sharing it. And with all of this new information coming out, it's really interesting when you cross-examine that with old texts. And maybe we're over here misinterpreting a lot of the messages that are in all these ancient texts. Like, when it says something about a land that we don't know of, but then this Nos Confounding map comes out and then that land is on there. It's like, did somebody create this? Or did someone create this from experience? Is this a composite of a bunch of old maps that are supposed to be telling us the true story, the true uh, geography of the plane that we exist on? It's pretty crazy, man. I mean, especially when you realize that in flight school, these pilots are taught how to navigate over a flat plane. And then on discovery channel we're told that plane have gyroscopes and they have to adjust the nose every couple whatever but then you talk to pilots and they disagree with all of that the gyroscope is just mechanics it's there it stays on the horizon it's an artificial horizon on the gyroscope so yeah let's get back into this next one man <laughs> no 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 those things are actually chained up in iraq underneath the euphrates river now, although I do not subscribe to the Bible, I do believe the Bible has some amazing stuff in there. 
In the Bible, it actually says the Euphrates River in Iraq will dry up in preparation for Armageddon, mm. which is when these fallen angels, these beasts, will be released upon wow. the world. The Euphrates River is drying up as we speak. As we speak. What is that? Mm. It's turning up out here. It ain't no joke, man. Y'all, I am freaking out right now. There is a lot wow. of unexplained things going on in the ocean right now. Hold on real quick. I do not ocean? trust them. Just watch this real quick for me. You get to Mars by going through the ocean. I've you can't this. get to the bottom of the ocean. Because outer space is the ocean. Now what she just mm. said just blew my mind. Now there is a situation called the firmament. So we know that water is all around us. And it is said right. that this dome divided the sea into upper and lower sections. Mm. You can't cancel this out because they still haven't discovered 80% of the sea. Early civilizations believed that the ocean and the stars above were linked. I mean, just look. Mayan, Norse, Hindu, Hebrew, all of them. Now we already know what space suits look like. But they look exactly like sea suits. I know once in your life you've heard of the Bermuda Triangle. Planes and people going missing in the ocean. There are black holes in the ocean. And I just know once in your life you've heard about sea monsters. When you see a comet, it looks like a boat soaring through water. What if these unexplained species in the ocean are actually aliens? If y'all have ever watched this movie Underwater, they went too deep and found the creature that don't even look like it's supposed to be from this earth. Or could it have just been a creature from space? Now you can say what you want, but I bet you we are not the only beings, only species, only creatures that are in this universe. It's just ironic that when they return to earth, they're on water. I mean, I know I'm not tripping. And I know y'all heard of mermaids. So many unexplained things in the ocean. They're making more discoveries in space. Not really putting too much money or caring about what's going on on the planet. Why? Because right. this sea stuff might have a lot of connections to space. And they right. not telling us. Y'all be safe, and I know I'm not the only person who feel this way. Have y'all noticed something? Especially with Avatar 2, these upcoming movies are talking a lot about water. Specifically the ocean and what's going on down there. Them having to fight wars on the water. Even with the new Black Panther movie. Wars with an underwater tribe. I feel like there's more going on in the ocean than they're talking about. Now, as y'all know, y'all saw when the ocean was literally on fire. What are they hiding from us? And then 11 years before that, it was another ocean fire that they purposely did. Flames were intentionally set. Far offshore, crews lit some of the thickest parts of the oil slick ablaze. Parts surrounded by fire-resistant boom. I guess I'm tripping though, right? Even though last year they let off a 40,000 pound bomb in the ocean. Now tell me y'all don't believe that underwater civilizations are down there. Now in the new Black Panther movie, it seems like it's beings coming from the water to fight. Also, the new Avatar movie, coming from the water to fight. Y'all seeing all over the world that these floodings and hurricanes is happening everywhere all around the world. In Florida, Pakistan, all of that. Even in the desert. Something is going on and they're not playing about it. If we throw in the existence of mermaids and the amphibious beings who taught the Dogon tribe information about the sky, all of that. Where do y'all think these beings are living? Why do you think they keep trying to bomb these oceans? Trying to figure out ways to set it on fire. They're sending us a message, y'all. So stay dangerous and tell me what you think. Alright, so that was a lot to unpack right there. Um, so let's start with the giants being kept or the fallen angels being kept under the ground in Iraq, okay? Um, as the video said, the Bible does state that God chained up angels, fallen angels, under the ground as punishment for bringing uh, forbidden knowledge to humanity and for laying with human women. Um, and the fact that you can hear some creature 
growling, making noise, calling out for help under the desert is baffling to me because it's like, that's obviously not a mountain lion or a dog or something else that lives in that environment that's making that noise. It just sounds too inhuman, too otherworldly to be something like that. And then when it comes to um, the sea being a portal to outer space, it kind of makes sense with this whole flat earth um, model that we have. Okay, so in the Bible, it talks about in the beginning, God separated the waters from above from the waters below with the firmament, correct? And in all the models that we see, it's like a atmospheric globe, not a the whole world is a sphere. It's more like we live on a flat plane. We have a firmament above us and then we have um, something below us to keep that water separated. So with the flat earth model, it's saying that space is water. So going out into outer space through the ocean makes sense. Um, there's another video that I'm probably not going to play today, but it talks about these brine pools in the ocean where mussels surround this underwater lake okay let me say that again it's an underwater lake okay and the person who made this discovery shortly after disclosing the information was mysteriously found unalive so you got to think this information is coming from somewhere it can't all be false it it's coming from a place of truth okay and when they tried to go into this underwater lake the submarine bounced off of the surface of the lake so it was super saline super dense so dense that you couldn't penetrate that extra layer so you really you really you really got to think about what is going on but let's get back into the next there's no ice on it and guess what antarctica hadn't been discovered yet antarctica was discovered in 1820 and if you look well, look, there's an alligator. There's a camel. Warm mm. weather animals. So, you want to explain to me, first thing, what the hell is this? All this land. And second thing, what froze them? What happened between 1587 and 1892 where those areas got frozen? Ooh, we might have done it again. We may have solved a biblical mystery. And whether you're religious or not, this affects you too. Get there on page one of the Bible. God created a firmament above the earth to separate the mm -hmm. waters from the waters. And he called right. the firmament heaven. So if there's an impenetrable dome above us, space travel is virtually impossible. Many believe that NASA was formed as a diversion to keep people from nosing around from Admiral Byrd's discovery down by the South Pole. Admiral Byrd discovered land, lots of land, undiscovered land down mm. by Antarctica. But sadly, after his television interview explaining this, Byrd passed away. A year later, NASA was formed. A year after that, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by all 12 countries, making exploration impossible. Well, that seems suspicious. Many believe that Antarctica is actually an ice wall, a total circumference around all of our continent, keeping waters of the oceans in place. There are multiple maps just like this that depict a potential truth of what I our world really earlier. is. There we are in the middle. Just beyond our ice wall lie other continents and another ice wall surrounding them. Beyond their ice wall, more continents and another circular ice wall. There are also maps like this one showing multiple continents with ice walls around it that cover mm. the surface of Earth, with one large ice wall at the end of it. There is not one single reference in the Bible that the Earth is round, but there are references to things such as, and I place the Earth on its foundation. You can't really put a foundation right. on a sphere. The four right. corners of Earth are mentioned multiple times. I don't care how many times I spin a tennis ball, I cannot Dang. find four corners on it. But, oh, when I said, oh, I discovered something in Book of Enoch that just might clear all of this up and answer our questions right now. Chapter 27, God said to Enoch, as he was explaining and describing how he created the earth, and I commanded that there should be taken from light and darkness, and I said, be thick. And it became thus, and I spread it out with the light, and it became water. And I spread it out over the darkness, below the light. And then I made firm the waters, that is to say the bottomless, and I made foundation of light around the water, and created seven circles from inside. Hmm. And imagined the water like crystal, wet and dry, that is to say like glass. Well, I don't know about you, but that's a really good way to describe that first ice. Video. Wet and dry water, yeah. like glass. Chapter 28. And then I made firm the heavenly circle. I collected the sea in one place and bound it together with a yoke. And I said to the sea, Behold, I give you your eternal limits, and you shall not break loose from your component part. He clearly told Enoch. He made seven circles of ice to keep the waters mm. of earth within. And I think now we have our answer. Mm. 
Wow. Okay, so I did not notice that up above it said Enoch was alive in the 16 or the 1600s. I I missed where that part went went with the video, but that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna have to research that. But yeah, man, like we've been saying in all these videos, all this stuff ties together because we are not being told the whole truth. No matter how you want to look at it, stuff does not add up. How come every time they shoot a rocket in the space recently, every time we see it going up, it looks like it hits a barrier and skips along that thing? Why? Why is that? I was just talking to my pops about this the other day. Happy birthday to him, by the way. But, yeah, my family is very, 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 very Christian. And when it comes to all this new information coming out, uh, a lot of it corresponds with the Bible. And since it's foreign, quote unquote, knowledge, people aren't gelling with it because it's safer for people to believe that science is fact and that the stuff about flat earth is science fiction but in reality what's more fiction what we can see or what we are told is real that's it for today man um like I said, like, subscribe, comment, everything to make this video go up. Because it's a good one. It's probably the best one I've done so far. But also, if you want your music played at the beginning of the end of the video um, to showcase your talent, DM me, email me. My email is going to be in the description. And yeah, go cop yourself some Ambrose clothing. Because we got all of that alt gear, you know for the all boys out here and we're gonna have some female clothing too um so yeah man it's your boy ybf pharaoh it's been ybf picked it and we out here